Big question coming in tonight is who's going to go to the high side? The answer Whoa. is three cars crashing yeah, back at the back, two, including it looks like Roman Grosjean in the 77, one of the Meyer Shank cars. Oh, that's David Malukas in the 66. Oh boy, and the, the sponsored car for the race, ah. High V. Christian Lundgaard for Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan Racing. We see that. 66 is still rolling. There's some damage, obviously, to the right front there. Can't tell from this angle if it's terminal. Augustine Canapino giving a thumbs up to the AMR safety team. Tough break for him. He's been really, really strong this weekend. Townsend. And this guy, David Malukas, qualified third last weekend at Mid-Ohio on the road course. A brilliant job. Had a pit stop issue and now out early at Iowa. Hopefully he can continue, but certainly out of staying on the lead lap as Roman Grosjean, the teammate to Canapino, comes to pit lane. They look at the left rear suspension. So that's Joseph Newgarden, the red and oh. white car, and below Malukas on his own, loses just the got, back end. Just got the left sides, James, over that white line. They call it the hinge point. Grosjean hit his teammate and Malukas and was able to continue. Cool. Let's listen here with Lundgren. Still there, there. Got one outside still. Oh. He did the same thing, it looks like. Left front, exactly the same. Right over that hinge point, crossed the white line, went from banking to flat track. This is on board with his teammate, Grant Ray Hall. Wow. Job. This is Christian Lungard getting that high V Honda back out on track. He'll be a few laps down. 17 to be precise. That's a lot. All right, let's get ready to go again, and let's get into a racing rhythm. This is going to be really interesting, and Colton Herter, after he crashed out of the Indy 500 and had a mediocre Detroit, he has been on a run of top fives. This guy's hitting his form at the right time of the season. Let's go. The Gamebridge Honda leads the field to green, but watch McLaughlin in that yellow and white Expel Chevy. He goes the high line. Not afraid to send it high, but not quite as much grip. A little bit slow off. That's going to allow Alex Pillow and the red and yellow DHL machine to close up. Not enough, but man, I'd say that Scott looks pretty racy early on. I've been curious, guys, how did Newgarden gain so many spots? Let's take a look back. On board here for the original start. Uh, strong to quite strong on the high side. A lot of trust in his race car, a lot of trust in his fellow racers. Just managed to clear and be ahead of David Malukas when that spot, that spin happened. Had he been a little bit more hesitant or reserved on that start, he may have been right in the middle of that mess. If that looked like a guy that's won nine out of the last 12 oval races. I, I was just, I was going to be, be sarcastic and say, that's what Joseph Newgarden does here at Iowa. When we went to the break, I said there's been a penalty, and it is a costly one. It's been handed down to AJ Foyt Racing, Santino Ferrucci, for being out of line at the restart. And guys, by doing this, it sent him from 5th to 22nd and a lap down. Oh, that's tough. I, I mean, so everybody's going, green, green's green. on. That, that is a really, really Clear by five. questionable call to make. I mean, he had, a, he had a run going, popping out for some clean air. I have a hard time with that one. It's, I mean, a drive through or a stop and go, either one effectively ends his night in terms of a chance to win this race. Ed Carpenter apparently got high and out of the groove and is circulating oh, oh. very slow as Colton Herta on the outside. goes high. He had, a hand, he had his clear in. hands full. The veteran of the NTT IndyCar Series back in to do the ovals as we've seen for many years now. We'll have to see if they just go tires and resend them. It looks like that's the case. Portion is out and it is for the one cure Honda of Graham Rahal, who is slow on the apron and look at that front right. Looks like it's there's like something in the drive line shattered. I don't know. You yeah. can see the way the front tire is, is moving around. It sure looks like something's given up mechanically there. Wheel broke, probably an upright. We take a look back at Clint Herta launching, and here comes Scotty Mack. A little quicker on the launch and gets to pit speed first. It was all about being boxed in by the five of Padua Ward. Much cleaner exit from McLaughlin. 
So the 26 just had to drive around, lost a little bit of momentum, and it was a foot, if that, at the line. And then, of course, championship leader Alex Pelot was third coming in. Stalls leaving the box all the way to the back in 19. But here's how close it was at pit out. Kevin guessed that it was a foot. Now the question is, can these guys make it to about lap 166 to make it on one more pit stop? They're going to have to take care of their tires. Let's see how well behaved they are on this restart. Scott McLaughlin, the Expel Chevy, and his team, the Thirsty Threes, are in front. Look at Dixon in that orange and blue PNC Bank Honda. And Herder defends and then goes on the attack. Herder on the inside of McLaughlin, wheel to wheel through turns one and two. But McLaughlin saw the sweepers work, and he knows the track is clean to the high side, and he'll stay there. It was the high side he tried on the first lap, didn't quite make it work, but great work on this restart to roll the speed around the top. Excellent aggression from Colin Herter, though, on that restart. I love that. So many drivers said after practice, you can't go to the high side. McLaughlin tried it, and he makes it work on race day. Here's Pelot. Pelot is pouncing. He knows he's got positions to make up. He's already grabbed two since the restart. Coming Working up. on Pietro Fittipaldi. And it looks like he'll dispatch a him pretty quickly here into turn one. Next up looks to be Kyle Kirkwood. And the championship leader really making a charge here. Now the penalty being handed out, this time to the Verizon Chevy of Will Power. Speeding on pit road. He's oh. going to have to do a drive through. Here he is. And that's so tough at a short track, guys. That's a lap down for sure. Really compromises Will Power's night now. Look at the speedy Spaniard. He is just carving them up. Down he goes past Kirkwood. He is just checking them off his list. He restarted 19th. He's already up to 14th. But Colton Herta first to blink. Kevin, coming to you. And he should be plenty fine on fuel now. Everyone is staying out a little longer than they thought they could. They made the Firestones last, so they should have enough shell fuel to be able to turn up the wick a little bit and run a little harder in this last in. We know Colton Herta has been begging for a stop, so he got enough laps in. So we're down to 75 to go. Should be no problem. Let's watch and see. And maybe the undercut hitting first. If he can get some clean Oh, oh no! Kevin, Alex Pelot! the championship leader and that is terrible for Colton Herta that's going to put him a lap down and for Palo to lose it is a real surprise we don't know what happened this is highly uncharacteristic yeah, massive championship implications Sorry, what happened loses it by wow. himself so late in the corner T-Bell that's a bizarre one very strange that was just power down, and unfortunately, when he locked the brake pedals down, he was on a, a vector towards the wall. If he could have locked it down right there earlier, look at that view as pit lane sees the spinning Alex Pelot. And By this point, the leaders have gone by. Colton's a lap down. Here's on board with Kyle Kirkwood. That is so, so late in the corner. This is going to be a race off. Which pit crew is the best? And Scott McLaughlin is going to beat off Pato Award, Scott Dixon, and then Joseph Newgarden comes out fourth in this crew. Look wow. How, look how many Newgarden leapfrogged. This is game on. Everybody behave yourself. McLaughlin gasses it up, gets a little squirrely. He knows Pato Award, the mid Ohio winner from a week ago, is there. Here comes VK on the inside. VK inside, Marcus Armstrong, and then Armstrong's getting jacked up with Rossi and Erickson. Let's talk about Rossi falling back in that pit sequence. Erickson and Armstrong ahead of them. There goes Erickson by that green car of Marcus Armstrong. Now Alex Rossi in the orange and white car gonna line him up up behind. That's Nolan Siegel making moves. Nice work. Move after move. Somebody's on the high side. Ferrucci. That's Ferrucci. Track is clean. The sweepers have been out. Ferrucci's gonna get two in one lap. Rosenquist has to let him through on the inside. Forceful stuff from the A.J. Foyt racer. Now he's got Nolan Siegel in his eye, in his sight line. That'll put him up into the top 10. Colton Herta with a big move on Kiffin Simpson in turn one. That was for 14. The drivers know clean track right now. It will not stay that way. You've got to make hay if the sun is shining, as we might have an issue in turn one. Is that a powertrain for Linus Lundquist? He pulls off quickly as the caution is out. 30 laps to go.
go from here to decide who wins leg one of the high V double header. Nice late restart from McLaughlin. That's Erickson working the high side around Armstrong. Thought about maybe going on VK now. It's all about New Garden V Dixon. Big defense from Erickson further back into turn three. Marcus Armstrong's got lights blinking on the back of his race car. That's hugely distracting. Look at the red light yeah. flashing for Kyle Kirkwood, who looked like he had contact with Ferrucci. Ferrucci on the high side. There's the Sexton Properties machine. Whoa. He's not hanging around for anybody. And Ferrucci just went right to the inside of Armstrong for seven. We're just getting word that the, that the 11 of Marcus Armstrong is actually being black flagged for a mechanical. I I don't love that. Can't imagine that's his yes, fault. Uh, we don't know what to do here. Dylan Wayne Lights. Oh, round goes Herda. Herda spun and he catches it. Unbelievably. Good. What? Caution is out. What is happening on the racetrack? Armstrong looked like he was coming to pit lane. The late call to stay out on the racetrack, but ahead of him. And that might save Armstrong to try to troubleshoot something, recycle a system under caution and fix the caution lights that are coming on inadvertently. How did Herta save that, that thing? That was a crash that didn't happen. My goodness. Herta had just made some big moves. This is Rossi in the orange and white car. Herta behind. Unbelievable. Loses it halfway. Keeps it going. Armstrong does a great job to avoid him. That it wasn't even a spin. It was just a mild drift. This is on board with Herta. And how clairvoyant is Marcus Armstrong to know the caution's about to come and he's got his lights blinking. Maybe that's what it was all about. <laughs> Things are about to get crazy. That doesn't get much crazier. I, I don't even think Colin Herta understands what just happened. Scotty Mack has got just 21 laps left to go. Can he hold off the likes of Pato Award and Dixon and his teammate? Let's get back to it here at Iowa Speedway. Okay. Yellow's out. Somebody might have spun further back. I see a car stopped out at turn four. Yeah, 30. Oh, oh uh, that's Jack. Or sorry, that's uh, Ed Carpenter. Gonna hit on both sides. The, the 30s, 30s also stopped. So Pietro Fittipaldi and Ed Carpenter with contact oh, yeah. everywhere. Someone went over the top of somebody. Leader's gone, leader's oh. gone. Green, green, green. Just got punted by who? Uh, and collect, I imagine power maybe? Power. And then collected. Ed Carpenter, nowhere to go for Ed, on board with power. Yeah, just misjudged it. We talked about being a late restart for McLaughlin. And after starting the weekend, smoke, smoke coming from Erickson's Erickson. car. The oh. left rear, maybe the upright having could, an issue. Could be, or it could be drive line related, but clearly smoke coming the all the time. Brake fire. This is what happens sometimes under caution. You'll drag the brake to get heat into the tire carcass. May have overdone it a little bit. Hopefully it goes out once we go green. All right, let's get ready to go. Here we go. Ready? Going, going, green, green, green. Gets the cue to go. You just heard from Kyle Moyer there as they fan out. Erickson's going on the inside of VK. VK's holding strong. Here comes Ferrucci. Ferrucci high again. He's got one. He's going for two. Side by wow. side now with VK. Can he hold it through three and four? No, he backs out and goes down, but another great restart. So close. Ferrucci has had wheel-to-wheel -wheel action more than anybody else tonight. He backs out. Put me up the track. I couldn't do much. We understand the number 12 of Will Power will get a penalty for avoidable contact. That's a pretty easy call for race control. 30 seconds, the hold in the box. Ouch. That's at the extreme end Ouch. of avoidable contact penalties. The thirsty threes to the moon, as they like to say. One more to go. What's really special it's like one more. is the emergence of fellow Kiwi Shane Van Gisbergen in the NASCAR world. And once bitter rivals in Australian supercars, it's great to see these two Kiwis encouraging each other in different series in North America. Scott was happy for SVG last weekend. Shane will cheer on. Scott McLaughlin gets his very first notable win here at Iowa Speedway. Thank you, guys. Uh, Finally, Scotty Mack will say he got so close at Texas Motor Speedway a couple of times. 
denied by Scott Dixon once, denied by his teammate Joseph Newgard in another, but finally Scotty Mack and the Thirsty Threes have won on an oval. Hi folks, Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.